Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to preview Missouri basketball for the 2023-24 hoops season as we do with every team. Uh, our channel stays alive through sponsorship. If you're interested in that, contact caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. Blake, we're going to have some fun with this one because we get to talk about your client, Dennis Gates, who had one heck of a season in Columbia last year. Well, you know, already got a pay raise, already got a, what do you know, not shocked by this. Um, yes, I think Missouri basketball feeling pretty good about where they are after Dennis Gates' uh, first season in Columbia. Not many could have predicted how well he would do as head coach uh, at Missouri, but um, some of us, you know, probably a little bit more optimistic than others heading into the season last year. Uh, but yes, now they will try to do the hard part. And to me, that is uh, following it up after you put a season like that together. Um, now you've got to try to keep the momentum going and it's not easy to do in the transfer portal era. Uh, but once again, Dennis Gates has brought in some guys uh, to replace some guys. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, new look roster kind of fits all together. Now, now look, you say nobody could have predicted that. Are you calling us nobodies? Did we did we predict that? I I couldn't remember. Hey, if buddy, we were... you you were in my ear huh. three times a day last year about Dennis Gates. I bought in. I thought this was a better team than people thought, and we were proven right. Yeah, I just you know I just don't remember that. I I you know <laughs> I couldn't remember if we were the ones that were doing that or if it was the you know, I don't know. I think Twitter was Twitter to me. I thought was the one that was very optimistic about Missouri last yeah. year, and especially the hire of Dennis Gates. I think a lot of people were. Very excited um, coming in and really didn't doubt him at all. But anyways, um, we move on to the 23-24 <laughs> season and see where things stand with the Tigers. Oh, sarcastic Blake is, is best Blake. I enjoy that side of you. All right, hmm. uh, the backcourt. They got some dudes coming back who, who did some big things a year ago. Where do we start with the Missouri backcourt? I mean, you got you got Sean East, you got Nick Honor. Two guys that really take care of the ball, and, and that's a good start uh, to good offensive season, which Missouri you know, I think, certainly had a year ago. I think you start with Nick Honor, America's point guard, um, because <laughs> I, I think, you know, you look at what he did last year, and, and you know, this is not saying if you watch basketball, you know, like the point guard is he's a very important part of how things uh, are constructed on a basketball team, and I just, you know, you look at last year, we said he was one of those guys that I think that, uh, you know, he started every game, uh, made some big shots for them. Uh, I mean, shooting percentage at like a lot of people from Missouri last year, you know, shot 40% from three. Uh, and, you know, he just never put them in a position where you felt like, all right, you know, Nick Honor's the one that's putting this team, you know, in, in a bad spot, right? Like you never said that ever, not a single time, uh, because you just, is, is this the turnover ratio is great. He just took care of the ball. He was the leader on the court. He was the point guard. Like, again, we talk about it's kind of the era of positionless basketball and all those other things. You talk about guards who can play four positions and all this other stuff, right, which is fine. But sometimes it's nice to have just a pure point guard, and that's exactly what Nick Honor is. Um, and, yeah, this is going to be the case again. And I thought it was just huge to get him back because now knowing that you have a lot of new faces on the roster and knowing you got – you know, a lot to replace in terms of what Kobe Brown did last year, Demoy Hodge, um, DeAndre Golston, and so forth. It's big to have Nick Honor back to try to put everybody in the right spot because I think there are going to be with this team, there will be an initial adjustment period um, to where you're trying to figure some things out. I think early on in terms of what this rotation is going to look like, Gates will play a lot of guys um, as you would expect. But yeah, to me, the backcourt starts with Nick Honor, but then it really is going into – seeing all these other guys that they've added to the mix, which remember too, Sean East is coming back. Like you said, um, I think Sean East is progression is going to be important because, you know, it wasn't a great shooter last year, but I don't think we necessarily, he didn't have to be on this team. Um, but yeah, you know, he can defend. We talked a lot last year about his defensive ability. And I just think it's nice to have that combination of Nick Honor and Sean East in your backcourt leading the way, you know, but look, Chris, beyond that, right. It's, <laughs> I mean, how many guys do they have where it's like there's a lot of new faces that you're going to see uh, playing in the backcourt on the wing for this team, whether it's a, you know, a Caleb Grill coming in from Iowa State, uh, someone who 
what do you know, can make shots from outside um, and can also defend. And that's kind of what you want if you're NATO or not NATO. As we just did our Alabama preview. Dennis Gates. <laughs> um, NATO's may want that too. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, that's kind of the package you want for, for someone like that who basically averaged, what, 10 points a game, um, could make threes and, again, can defend. So I think Caleb Grill adds all that. John Tanjay coming over. So I guess kind of played small forward, power forward at times, Colorado State, but he listed as a guard on the Missouri roster, averaged 15 points a game, five rebounds. What do you know? He can also shoot the ball from outside. Uh, At least he did at Colorado State. And someone who I think that can help Missouri in a lot of different areas. Um, You know, Tamar Bates comes over (laughs) from Indiana. Someone who I think as soon as that decision was made, everyone said the same thing. All right, you go from playing in Indiana's offense to playing in Missouri's offense. Feels like a much better fit for a Tamar Bates. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a wing player who can shoot the ball and, and we're kind of just going all over the place here, but we're, these are, again, these are going to be guys that are part of this rotation. Um, so Kurt Lewis, right? Don't forget a Kurt Lewis who comes in as, uh, you know, Juco player of the year and, you know, coming off a national championship there, someone else who can shoot the ball and play defense. So I don't, I mean, I just forgot Caleb Brown. Like someone else, like they, they've got so many options here. I don't know exactly. I have the biggest mystery to me is what is the minutes distribution going to be in the Missouri basketball yeah. backcourt this season? That's one of the top three mysteries, probably in SEC basketball heading the season. I have no idea what the minutes distribution looks like for this team just from the backcourt. Um, because again, Caleb Brown, you saw it. We've seen Dennis Gates say this multiple times in multiple preseason outlets that Caleb Brown was the most improved player they had this summer. Um, so he's going to, if he's the most improved player they have, he's going to be part of that rotation, but however many pe- players that play. So Caleb Brown's going to be in there. So think about how many names I just listed off one, two, three, four, five, six, what, seven names. My goodness. We haven't even got to the front court yet, but like <laughs> that's where we are. So, well, and, and here's another one you missed. Um, and this is more, I guess, front courtish, but Aiden Shaw, who was yeah. the highest rated recruit they had last year, played kind of a supporting role as, other than Tamar Bates was the highest rated kid out of high school on this team, I think. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of dudes here. I was going to say, it's like, it's hard to even know what t- sometimes what position some of these guys play. Cause it's like, well, they got a lot of guards. <laughs> they got a lot of guys who can play guard, even if they're forwards. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Is we're used to Gates playing a lot of guys and he's going to have no shortage of options here on this team. Um, as always, there will be a couple of these guys that are not what we think they could be, probably. Um, maybe. I say that because why? There were people who said that last year, like going in. But Gates yeah. pretty much pushed all the right buttons and got everything out of pretty much everyone that, that he needed. Now, of course, there were a couple of examples of, of that not being the case for you know other reasons. But I think you just look at it from that standpoint. You know Noah Carter's going to play because, you know, to me, I mean, he he could be as important as anybody on this team because, once again, you know, what was the weakness of this team last year? It had a lot to do with consistent defense, rebounding, all those things. That's where Noah Carter, we know he can score. I mean, he played his best basketball of the season down the stretch. We were talking about him. I don't know how many times we brought his name up, you know, in the final stretch run of the season. Yeah. Like, he was just – he was always there making plays for this team. Uh, but he's going to have to be someone that, you know, continues to play a bigger role defensively too. Not that he didn't, you know, last year because, you know, big body, he had to to play a big role defensively against some of the teams they played, especially down the stretch. But, you know, he's going to have to rebound. He's going to have to do all those things and add that to the mix this year, uh, I think, for this team to be successful. You mentioned Shaw, Um, you know, someone else that I think came in, got adjusted to the SEC, got experience last year. Now, let's see how he continues to develop. Uh, I think especially, again, looking at it on the defensive side, because that's it's a clear area where they have to improve. Um, are they going to shoot the ball as well as they did last year? I don't think so. Uh, and I'm not trying to, you know, be, come on, please, I'm not trying to be negative about Dennis Gates here, but I just don't know if this team's going to shoot the ball as well as last as a team last year. No, they, they, they've got shooters, right? I mean, they, as you said, look at Nick Honor's numbers, look at Grill's numbers, look at Tanjay's numbers and so forth, but I don't know that they shoot the ball as well as that, right? And that's not, I mean, what they, what was in the percentage last year? Um, I had this, but I can't seem to find it on my notes now. 
they shot, I mean, what they were the number, they were top 10 offensive efficiency last year, like 17th yeah. in effective field goal percentage. They shot 36% from three. So that actually was a little bit lower than maybe I thought, but they shot 56% from two. Uh, they just, you know, they were very efficient on the offensive end. And so I don't know, maybe the numbers are just as good or better. I'm not sure. But a lot of that, Chris, I think is going to depend on what they get from Connor Vanover because yeah, he's back. Like he's back in the SEC here at seven foot three, started Arkansas, of course, went to Oral Roberts, had a great, just was tremendous at Oral Roberts. Um, you know, certainly a guy that if you're saying defensively, how can we change some of the things we do defensively and maybe get, you know, force tougher shots from the opponents? Well, having a seven three guy that blocked a ton of shots is a good place to start. Um, and you know, he can also make a lot of threes <laughs> too. So it's you know, maybe I was a little too negative. It's a, on the it's, a it's a odd team. I mean, not odd in a bad way. It's just an interesting team. And and I want to I want to wrap up some loose ends on some stuff you said because I have the same concern. These guys were efficient shooters last year, right? But it's it's one thing to take shots in the flow of the offense when everybody's worried about Kobe Brown, and that is a big freaking hole on this team. You lose a guy like that, and that that hurts. But I mean, that would hurt any team. We're not we're not bagging on Missouri here. But you you had guys a year ago like like Honor and East that, that shot the ball okay. I mean, I guess from the field they weren't great, but they got to the line and and, and were efficient there. But you just don't know is is there one guy that can take you know give you twenty points a night and give you a fifty five percent effective field goal percentage mark? I, I don't know. I've I've got I'm, I'm saving a little bit for later when we get to X factors on this because I got a couple of things here. But uh, one thing that I did notice, too, I think this team will take care of the ball. Assist to turnover ratios last year for these guys, Honor 3.1, East 1.7, Bates 1.6, um, Noah Carter 1.6. Th- those are pretty decent numbers. Uh, honors is elite, but that that's one thing is y- you feel like they're going to make good decisions with all that experience and that history there. Yeah. And look, it's just like, Kobe Brown he didn't shoot a lot of threes. Now he shot 112. Yeah, that's I mean, it's quite a few, but it's not a it's it's not a ton, I guess, in comparison, right? To but he did shoot 45% in that area. Now yeah. Demoy Hodge to me is the one. Like he is the person that I look at this and he is someone who <laughs> I mean he he made a hundred of two hundred and fifty three point attempts last year. He shot 40% from three. And it wasn't just that, right? It's the steals numbers. Like that guy was picking off people left and right yeah. all the time. Uh, I don't have as much of a concern that they'll be able to fill that gap there because of how they play defense. Um, because remember, too, why did things go so well for Missouri last year? They were stellar offensively most of the time. Um, they got good shots, but they also got better shots based on how many times they could t- force turnovers. So they got so many easy shots at times. Because mm-hmm. they were just turning people over at a ridiculous rate. And so that really helped, uh, you know, a ton last year because it was a team that didn't have a ton of size. They did have experience, but yeah, like that was the formula. And, and that's not going to change with this team, right? They're still going to be very aggressive. They're still going to try to force turnovers. They're still going to take a lot of threes. Um, you know, that's, I think, just how this goes when you look at this team overall. And like you said, I, I think, though, you can feel confident in who you have returning in terms of guys who can take care of the ball, put yourself in a good position to take good shots. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's easy to look at this and say, hey, is there a Kobe Brown or the Moy Hodge on this roster? I don't – I think you're going to have to have, have multiple guys replacing some of that production for sure. Um because I mean, I just don't think they have anyone on this roster that has the specific skill set of a Kobe Brown, specific skill set of a Demoy Hodge. But that's not to say that you're not going to have, you know, a John Tanjay come in and and be someone who can fill the stat sheet in a lot of areas, or a Caleb yeah. Grill come in and be the best he's been. Um, you know, maybe this is the right fit. Same with Tamar Bates. Like, who's to say he doesn't come in? And it's like, boom, the the switch just flips because now I'm playing in a system that's perfect for me. Whereas maybe that wasn't the case at Indiana. Um, you know, or it's a Lewis or it's, it's East taking a big, or it's the, the East, you know, Shaw pairing, taking a huge jump, uh, and all that. So, you know, they get Carl arrows in there too. Right. Uh, who come over from, from Campbell. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I Dennis Gates will play a lot of guys. He'll play a lot of guys early because that's what we saw, you know, throughout the season last year, especially early on, right? Those those non conference games were not pretty at times for Missouri last year. The defense was definitely not pretty. Uh, but hey, they they have options, and I think that's what he likes is to build a roster. And let's let's call this what it is. Yes, you have to replace some very important players from last year. But what is the thing that Dennis, why is Dennis Gates the head coach at Missouri? Because what did he do at Cleveland you? State? He completely rebuilt the roster from basically, from literally built, rebuilt the roster in a week and a half. I've told the story many times on that. Um, this guy knows how to put a roster together. Like, and, and I think it's, so who am I to question that, he feels great. Going, he feels confident going into the season with this roster. Who am I to question that? Because the guy has a track record that suggests that even when you look at a roster and say, I don't know if they're going to be able to compete in the top part of the SEC. Are they going to be able to beat, you know, a Tennessee, a Kentucky and Arkansas and Texas A&M and so forth. Uh, we can, we can question it all we want, but this guy's track rather record of putting together a, a roster that gets the most out of what they have is tremendous. So I'm leaning on that again this season. Some days I feel like I'm in a cult over here. I don't I don't see that as the, the case at all. I think it's you have good <laughs> eyesight is the way I see it. Um you're seeing clearly the rain is gone. Um and you can see clearly now. That's the way I see this. So this, this year is going to be so much fun. All right. Um I'm, I'm going to so. combine I'm going to combine a couple things here. We kind of talk about X factors and we talk about the front court. Uh, there are several guys that I could pick as X factors on this team. One of them is Vanover. Uh, let me just give you the numbers per 70 possessions last year. 19.6 points a game, 11.1 boards, five blocks even. Um, assist to turnovers, 0.8. That's, that's pretty good for a big man. He only fouled all – 2.1 times out of 70 possessions. That's that's incredible for a big man. Dennis Gates has called him almost a guard. He shoots threes. Uh, he, he lit it up at Oral Roberts last year, shot 81% from the line, true shooting percentage of, of 62%, effective field goal percentage of 59%, and say it's Oral Roberts. Well, Oral Roberts was, was a pretty darn good program. Um, and, and I remember two years ago when he's at Arkansas, and um, – some nights he'd be a big part of what they did, and then he'd go a month on a milk carton. And, and look, that's Eric Musselman. He just you, you fall out of favor there for whatever reason, and, and you vanish. I think it's going to be a different situation in Missouri, and, and for part of it, they have no choice. Um, but Aiden Shaw is kind of interesting too. We talked about how highly rated he was out of high school a year ago. Dennis Gates and Blue Ribbon called him one of the best athletes in the, in the country. Um, and I think you got Noah Carter too as kind of an X factor. I know this is shifting back to the back court, but we talked about them kind of needing a go to score. He did that in bits and pieces. Um, maybe not go to that strong, but needing a guy who can jump up and, and be a scorer. So I've thrown a lot at you there as, as we transition into the front court and and also talk about X factors. But those are my thoughts there. Yeah, my X factor, I went with Vanover. I, I think he's he's the guy that I, I just I want to see. You know, I, I think that coming back, you know, leaving the SEC, coming back, feeling like you're in a better spot skill wise and better equipped to handle, you know, playing in the SEC. I, I think he's there now, and you know, sometimes that's just the process you have to go through to get there. And so I I think to me he's the one because he can help them in a lot of different areas, just given his size and just the unique abilities for someone with his size. Um, they, again, they're going to need to be better defensively. I know they could get away with it some last year, but you know, if you just say, all right, last year, maybe we're not going to be as good in every single one of these offensive areas. Although, like we said, they don't have any shortage of options to get them there, but it, you still need to get better uh, in some of those areas that you were not as good in. Uh, and I think Vanover can perhaps help them do that, especially just given the, you know, the ability to block shots and those kind of things. So I went with Vanover as my X factor. But like you said, you could easily point towards uh, an Aiden Shaw, a Sean East to me. Um, 
you know, if he can add more scoring ability consistently, that would be great on a team that still has a lot of options for guys to do that. Um, so I think, yeah, that that's probably the three I would list would be Van over Shaw and East uh, in some order. Okay, I think the big concern for this team is the same thing as it was last year defense. I'm looking at defensive ratings. Vanover's a 91 a year ago, which is borderline elite. That was at Oral Roberts. Don't know how that translates to Missouri. We'll see. But uh, the other guys, boy, this is where it gets a little rough. Honor, 111. Tanjay, 108. East, 109. Carter, 109. Bates, 107. Shaw, 110. Um, <laughs> those, those are not good numbers. Those will need to improve, or you know, they will have to score a ton of points on the other end, which they are also Chris, probably Chris, capable Chris. of doing based on what we saw a year ago. Chris, Chris, am I, get, Chris. am I getting scolded here? Chris, Chris, Chris. Let's just think about something here. The greatest Dennis Gates quote, Avery, to date here, courtesy of our there friends at the Almanac, um, who you know put together a great preseason guide. Check it out if you haven't already. Um, the greatest quote, I made sure to put this in my notes to save this for when you started scolding my man, Dennis Gates here. The quote is very simple. You talk about last year, they got to do this. They got to do that. They were terrible at this. And they're like, all right, that's great to hear. But <laughs> quote from Dennis Gates, would you rather win 25 games or win the rebounding battle? End quote. I'll take the 25 games, Chris. So if they get out rebounded every game this year, um, so be it. Give me the 25 wins instead. Uh, but no, he, I did think that was a, a great quote. But he's kind of right. I mean, it's, look, they, they found a system that worked for them last year, even with some clear deficiencies. Uh, can they do it again this year? It's a fair question to ask uh, because, it, you know, like you said, the numbers are not great in terms of what they have. But um, that's where, like I said earlier, I think it's why were their steel numbers so good, right? it's because the Moy Hodge was just like an instant turnover force guy. Like if you had him near you look out because he was going to force a turnover. But I think what's also important to realize is like, you know, honor was able to, to force steals. Sean East was able to force steals um, because of the position they played and how they, you know, played in that regard. So yeah, it's, it's again, man, it's uh, to me, like I, the Moy Hodge was just so, so essential to what they did last year in so many different ways. And and we can obviously say the same for Kobe Brown and, you know, scoring wise, DeAndre Golston was and so forth. But that that's why I think it, you know, yes, you're, you're going to look at some of these areas and wonder, can they get better here? Because you just feel like there are going to be some of these areas just by the nature of how things work, that they're going to get a little worse in, right? Like statistically, they're going to have to be a little bit worse in some of these areas. Um, I would be surprised if they're not just based on how this roster is constructed versus how last year's was constructed. So I have so much fun just winding you up and letting you do this. Well, something else to keep in mind here. Um, <laughs> they, they won a lot of close games last year. Yeah. And I said this one time and I remember people were not happy necessarily when I said this, but I said, you know, Missouri has gotten lucky sometimes, but that's okay. Like, there are a lot of teams who have gotten lucky, you know, in college basketball, like, you know, some teams just make runs when you just get a bunch of things go your way, but they, they made their own breaks in many of these cases. Like, because again, of how good they were in specific areas. Sure. Did they get a cut the ball bounced their way a couple of times? Sure they did, but they found the formula that worked and did it lead to them playing in a lot of close games? Like you said, because of how maybe, deficient they were in one area and then how great they were in another area. You just kind of things had to meet in the middle sometimes. And that made for a lot of close games. And again, what was the stat, Chris? They won, was it seven or eight? No in games decided by five points or less. So, I mean, that's going to kind of regress at some point, right? Like it's very hard to do that consistently. You're going to, you know, lose a couple of those games nine times out of 10, uh, at least like that's just how the ball bounces. But I still, I think some people look at last year as, as a fluke. Like, I just don't see that as a fluke. I see it as someone who came in, saw what he had on the roster, built around it, played to the strengths while understanding that there were really not many ways they were going to be able to improve some of the just obvious weaknesses. But they just continued to hit on their strengths time and time again. And that put them in a position where they had a chance to 
you know, be a top team in the SEC, get to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Um, and that's all you could ask for, I think, for a starting point for Dennis Gates and his staff. Now it's keeping the momentum going with a different roster, losing, you know, two high, high caliber players in Kobe Brown and Demoy Hodge. And again, that's not taking away Golston and everyone else that, that's not returning either. But yeah, I mean, I I think I I put my trust in Dennis Gates to figure it out. <laughs> um, even if I may have a few more questions with this team than I did once we saw early on last year what that team could be. Uh, we're probably going to say the same thing this year, but th- there are some things that you you want to see them improve, but what they don't lack is options, and I think you'll have some breakout guys that we just haven't talked a lot about because we just don't know what the minutes distribution is going to be one through 10. So, By the way, do it. Excuse me to explain some things for for people who might be new to our channel. Dennis Gates has been part of show culture for a couple of years now, uh, and, and Blake's um, unrelenting optimism around Dennis Gates. Which, by the way, I'm, I'm not making fun of Blake. He he was right on a lot of it when a lot of people were 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 not. Uh, so we we've had a lot of fun with that. Just so people know. Um, but yes, to to be serious. Okay, last year Ken Palm didn't like this team as much as it's in CAC. There were two reasons defense was statistically poor. Even despite the steals, they just gave up points in bunches. And the other thing was, was the luck that points allowed points scored suggested they won a few more than, than they should have, but that happens to somebody every year. And look, look at what he walked into. Um, Conzo Martin had them five years starting backwards, or, or excuse me, they won 15, 15, 16, 12, the four years preceding Dennis Gates' arrival in Columbia. Um, completely transformed the identity. Konza was a defensive guy. They became one of the most exciting offensive teams in the country to watch, and, and they got to 25 wins. However, they did it. Um, yeah, you, you could pick flaws, but they got there. They got to a place they hadn't been in a while. He's built an identity. He's built an excitement. And, yes, there are some things that we have concerns about. And it's going to be a really, really good league, we think. We've said that before. Sometimes been wrong. But there, there's a path for him getting back to the NCAA tournament this year. I don't know if this is the team that's got a tremendous ceiling because of the questions we've got, but certainly one that can get back there. Yeah. You know, it's – I mean, yeah, I, I don't know that this team has a ceiling that last year's team had. Like, and think about it. We would have we would have said this last year going into the season. I think a lot of people would have said, I just don't know what this team's ceiling is compared to, you know, I don't think we would have said it was as high as it was. Even for someone like me who was very high on Dennis Gates, I don't think I would have said they're winning 25 games this year. Um, even as the ceiling, I wouldn't have said that. Like, I, I would have thought, all right, maybe they compete for an NCAA tournament bid and that's progress, right? That's that's definitely a step in the right direction. But no, like they took it a step further. But I think when you look at this roster, I want to see of all the newcomers, like to me, this is what it comes down to. Who are going to be, you know, those guys, right? I'm not saying who's going to be a Des Moy Hodge necessarily, but like who's going to play that role of guy who comes in, immediately makes it clear he is going to be a force to be reckoned with, with how they want to play. You know, is that a grill? Is that a Tanja? Is that a Bates? Is that a Lewis? Is that a Van? Or- like all those guys that are new to the program. That's what I want to see uh, because they're going to have to have probably multiple of those guys come in and be huge contributors on this roster while also feeling pretty confident that Nick Honor, Sean East, like I said, Caleb Brown, someone definitely keep an eye on uh, just per Gates. I mean, that's, I'm going to believe the coach here when he says that, you know, this guy has gotten this much better. Caleb Brown, someone to keep an eye on. Noah Carter, um, you know, Aiden Shaw, all the guys that are returning. I'd be surprised if any of those guys get pushed out, right? I think all of those guys yeah. are going to be a factor here. It's just of the remaining group, who are the guys that emerge? And, you know, again, maybe one of those guys becomes the guy. Uh, maybe a couple of them become guys that have to play 25 plus minutes per game. They're going to, I mean, statistically, they probably have to. Um, who's it going to be? I don't know the answer to that just yet. And I know Missouri fans, you know, have kind of talked about this on Twitter and such, and people have their own opinions, but I like to see it 
in game game action uh, before I fully commit to saying it's going to be this guy, it's going to be that guy because you've got a lot of guys that are coming in trying to compete for those spots and yeah, Gates will absolutely give him an opportunity. Um and at the end of the day, I think he will push the right buttons to put this team in a position. By the way, I didn't get my MVP pick. I'm going Nick Connor. Um, I'm going to pick him as the MVP, although I think Nora Carter is uh, the second one I picked. But he's going to be the one, I think, that puts them in the position to get back to the NCAA tournament. Um, if they don't get there, if this team goes you know, in the wrong direction or – does not maybe meet the expectations that has now been set from what they did last year. I mean, I think it would just be, you know, them not being able to, to make strides defensively and in rebounding. And that combines with them maybe not as being as an elite of a team offensively. I think that's that combination. Sure. Could keep them out of the NCAA tournament. If you're looking for a, a floor type scenario. Here's an interesting thing that I didn't pick up on until literally just as we're doing this. And I, I might have even missed somebody. You know how many guys I count that finished high school in either 18 or 19 on this team? It's probably a lot because, I mean, they're – Eight. That's, yeah, they're that's a the lot. Experienced. I think Arkansas yeah. is the most experienced team. I think Missouri – no, I have to look back at it. I had notes on that somewhere, but I don't have it in front yeah. of me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that – Look, now some of these guys have had stops and starts. They played in, in bits and pieces. They've gone JUCO routes. And so it's not, you know, the same as being on an SEC roster for four or five years. But I, I think that's that's something to consider. I think playing a lot of basketball counts for something. And these dudes have played a lot of basketball in terms of years on rosters. Well, I mean, rinse and repeat. They were top 20 team nationally last year in experience. They played literally. Yeah. I mean, if you took out who? Um, Shaw was a freshman, of course. Yeah. Diara was a junior. He's a Juco guy. But if you take those guys out, Golston, Hodge, Kobe Brown, Carter, East, like these are all upperclassmen, older guys. So like, that's the way that you win now. And we've seen that with teams that have had success, build an older team with a lot of guys, a lot played a lot, even if it's not in the conference you're in. They're transfers, but yeah, they they've got a formula. Like you're you're seeing what it is, and I think they've got another roster here that can execute exactly what they want to do. It's just um, you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to keep doing it year after year in the SEC. That's the state of the league. It's a very strong league. So we'll see if they can do it. I have confidence. In case you uh, did not get that from our thirty minute conversation here. All right, we were going to be talking a lot about the Missouri Tigers and Blake's client, Dennis Gates, as, as well as every SEC basketball team. Best way to get that, hit Maybe. that subscribe button. We actually may just yeah. talk about Missouri this year. I apologize. Well, we to could, we could just do Missouri Mostly. four hours a day for, for seven days a week. That, Dennis that would... Gates Power Hour coming to you every day, <laughs> live at midnight. Um, there you go. Hit the subscribe I cannot button. wait to do this season. It's going to be so much fun. Hope you guys are here for it. Thanks for those of you who watched. Um, give us a subscribe if you haven't. Tell a friend. Hit the like button. That helps our analytics. For Blake Lovell, I'm Chris Lee. This is Southeastern 14. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again.